Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Waves from SlideNerd here. In this video, we are gonna talk about where to put the script tags on your page. Now depending on where you put it, what's gonna happen is either the user sees something quick or the user sees a blank window for some time and then he sees something happening on that page. So let's take a look at what we can do to make things better for the user. So where do we put the script tag? Now if you take a look at this example out here, a simple snapshot from a simple application. You have a script over here type text JavaScript sources example 1.js example 2.js and so on. In other words what you would normally do is you would put all the script tags external scripts internal scripts whatever inside the header section of your HTML page and in the body you will go and write the content. Well that's great but the problem is this approach has one shortcoming. The main purpose of the format is to keep all the external files that is the CSS and JavaScript files and all the links to those files in the same place now this is the reason why people used to put script tags in the header section but this means that every JS file is gonna be first downloaded it's gonna be parsed and interpreted before the page begins showing up on the user's browser in other words if you have a H1 over there in your body which says hello from me then that is gonna show after all the JavaScript has been run and interpreted and downloaded and stuff. So if you have a lot of JS code, there is going to be some time the page is going to stay blank when the user sees nothing and after that only the user is going to see something out there. Let me show you this in action in WebStorm and you guys will understand what I'm talking about. So here in JetBrains WebStorm, I have a head in my page for HTML there's a script over here which is an external script it's linking to a file test.js which is inside this folder js and there's nothing but a message which says what's up from slide nerd and webs so ideally the user should see this message first and then the page should uh, interpret the JavaScript or something because you don't want to keep the user looking at a blank window but if you go to the test.js here what I have done is I have written some statements out here that simulate a long running task now of course you don't have to worry about what these things mean there's basically a for loop over here and there's basically a document dot right over here I will be talking about what these things do for now all I want to show you is something that takes a good amount of time to run so if you go now here and watch this in Chrome just click Chrome over here and as you guys notice it keeps loading out there and it's spinning and ultimately you see some number coming up and then there is the WhatsApp from slider and waves message now in other words the user was seeing a blank message for some time before he could see the final output on the browser window now let's go back and change things a bit over here now let me pull this entire script from this head section all the way below our body section over here can you do that well of course you can what will happen in this case is first and of course I have to close the script tag over here now what will happen first is the head is going to be run here, the statement, this one is going to be run, then the statement will be seen here, after which your browser is going to go inside this file and is going to run all these statements over here. So now let's take a look at the same page in Chrome and find out what happens. If you go to Chrome now, as you see this is first run over here, then still there's a spinner at the top and then the value pops up over here, which means the user is not seeing a blank window. Rather, he sees the content on the page first and then the JavaScript loads and executes. Now, this is the way you want your pages to be. Now, of course, this is the simplest of the tricks out there to make a better user experience. What you have in the later versions of JavaScript is something called defer and async the two attributes that let you control how when JavaScript is downloaded and what the user sees on his browser window. We will be talking about both those attributes in the upcoming videos. Now let's go back to the presentation and figure out some important points out of this. So the strategy is to put your script stuff at the bottom of the page just below the closing body tag and that's gonna make all the content inside body appear on the browser first and then the script is gonna be executed. So in this approach the page is fully loaded, the JS code is processed once the page has been rendered and ultimately the user experience is better because the amount of time spent on a blank browser window is reduced. So in this video we have taken a look at a simple trick out there that is used to enhance the user experience. In the upcoming videos we are going to talk about the differ and async attributes and what you can do with those. In the meantime if you guys do like what you saw 
Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel and comment on the comment boxes below and let us know your thoughts about what you think about this. Have a nice day and thanks to RJ Christie for contributing the presentations. If you guys do have some presentation that you want to send us, email us at slidenote at the rate gmail.com and I'll catch you later. Have a nice day.